Shalom Chabrin. We're here at En Gedi, at the very top up here at the tallest waterfall, which we showed you here that's about, oh, 60, 70 feet straight up at the top of the mountain. I'm going to share with you some of the views as we go back down of the Dead Sea from way up in En Gedi. What a beautiful, beautiful place that David came to as he was hiding from Saul. You know, as we were coming up here, I could not help but think about Yeshua being the son of David. I'm finding there's so many things that type David and Yeshua, as we spoke about recently, how that David went up on the Mount of Olives, wept over Jerusalem. Uh, he took his men. He could have fought and destroyed his own son, Absalom. But like Yeshua, he had compassion. I never could really understand that about him when I first read the story of David because even his, his general there with him says to him, you bring a shame upon your people the way you just continually go over Absalom and saying, I wish that I could have died for you, my son. But then the Lord revealed to me he was a perfect type of Yeshua because Yeshua was the only one that could die for the sins of Israel. The very ones that hated him, the ones that spit upon him, the ones that betrayed him. He was willing to give his life for them. He did what David could not do, and that was he gave his life. He died for Israel. Instead of, in this case, instead of Absalom dying, when David wanted to take his place, it ended up being Yeshua that was the only one that was able to do it. So when I was coming here, the one thing that crossed my mind was that, you know, David, when David was uh, coming up and hiding from Saul, always having to run, there was always a problem for Saul. And the, the whole purpose was, was that Saul, who had been anointed king, but really was not the one that was chosen of God. I mean, God did choose Saul. We know that God had him anointed, but he was not, he was not the right kind of king. He did not... He did not have the full desire of God to, to do the will of God. So he raised up David. But David lived in exile almost the entire time. He had to live in exile away from Saul and could not take his rightful place. And Yeshua the same way when he came, they wanted him to be king. His people, the people that loved him and believed him wanted him to be king. But it wasn't the hour. So he spent his time running. He spent his time here in Engedi is one of the places, one of the many places that he took and he ran from Saul. But it's incredible, incredible place. And it's amazing. It reminds me of when Yeshua says the desert will blossom like a rose. As we were driving up here to Engedi, my wife was driving through the deserts along the Dead Sea and she really got to see, this was like Arizona in the United States. If you've ever been to Arizona, it's nothing but a wasteland. And right here, nestled in a little valley, even driving up the road to Engedi, you can't even tell that this place even exists. But when the water strikes the ground and comes down through this valley, everything blossoms. Life just, it just comes to life all around you here. The animals come here, the birds, the ibex, all kinds of little creatures that live here that enjoy the splendor of this little oasis in the desert. No doubt it was a place where David could get alone and the Spirit of God could speak to him here. It's amazing. We love you guys. We thank you for your support and standing behind this ministry. Right now we're enjoying the beauty of Israel and bringing that to you. But we realize not this coming, well this week here we have a little bit of quiet time. But starting next week the blood moons, Passover, a lot of tensions as you saw in the news this morning of events that are getting ready to unfold with the Vatican and their desire to take over Israel. The genocide that they intend to do. The Palestinians that do not want a single Jew living in their land. It won't be as tranquil as in Gedi. But this is the hour that God will come on the scene and this is the time that we need you as well. It's a tough time. 
We're still looking for a permanent place here in Israel. We have a long-term stay right now until about the end of May, but we're needing a place as well here so we can make a permanent base here. And unfortunately, we realize it will not be in Jerusalem. For 42 months, that Antichrist spirit, that devil, that Catholic Pope will walk the streets of Jerusalem. But the two witnesses will overcome him and they will defeat them. God, they have no idea what God intends to do here in Israel. And then the desert, all the desert around us here, will blossom like a rose. I'm Stephen Bendenu, sending you greetings from Engedi, in the land of Israel. God bless you. Baruch Hashem. You know what? It was exciting, and we had to share this with you. I was telling my wife that when we were coming up here, God was really dealing with my heart about David as a type of Yeshua and Gedi. And just as we finished this clip a few moments ago, we was getting ready to leave here, and then one, the Holy Spirit revealed to me another thing, that David was typing the son of David, which is Yeshua. And that is when, when Saul was, came up into this mountain area to try to find David, and David was hidden in the cave. God puts like Saul like into a deep sleep or something, and David goes into the cave and takes and cuts the corner of his garment off. Now his men said, this is the hour you should slay him. The enemy of God, you should slay him. And David said, far be it from me to touch God's anointed. And what is this? It's incredible. Saul represents Israel in their exile of their blindness, of not knowing who Mashiach is. You see, the thing is, is David could have taken his life, but he said, far from it be from me, for me to touch God's anointed. And Israel is the anointed of God. And his men, they wanted to take his life. They wanted to kill him. Just as many people have wanted to annihilate the Jews today. But this is not what God wants. Do not touch his anointed. In fact, when Saul and his sons end up dying in battle, they end up the same place that the prophet Samuel is. So yes, they do give their lives later in battle, but God redeems them. They're still the anointed of God, and we do not touch the anointed of God. It's a beautiful type as he played out Yeshua so perfectly in this life. God bless you. From Engedi, Stephen and Yonah Baruch Hashem.